Yo, what's good, my people? Welcome to Wally's Welding World. I'm the Weld Professor, and today I'm just kind of going over some of my beveling machines and what I'll be working with out here. This is one of my, actually, this is my biggest beveling machine right here that I have. This is a H and M. It's a, a 20 to 14 inch, so it cuts anywhere from a 20 inch pipe down to a 14 inch pipe. Um, right now, all I have is a short barrel. I don't have a long barrel. That's why my bridge is actually flipped upside down, if you notice. And I'm using the short barrel for it. So for every like little thing that you think, there's always a trick on how to get around things. Now, I'm not saying a trick like in a bad way, but like a trick in a way to use it to your advantage in a good way. Because I'm all about taking advantage to your advantage in a good way, never in a bad way. And that's kind of what this situation is, taking advantage of the bridge and utilizing it, maybe not the way it's intended, but still in a way, the way it's intended, and I'm able to serve the same purpose as if I had a long barrel and I was having the bridge up. So I just wanted to come out here today and tell you guys a little bit about these beveling machines and um, the reason we use them and why we're using them out here. And the reason we're using them is because you're able to rotate this around the pipe, right? And so you line your beveling machine up to get a good straight cut, and that gives you a nice good straight bevel. So that way when you put the two pieces together, they go together perfectly you don't want a gap like that you know when you're going to make a fit because then it's going to be a fit trying to make that fit your welds are just gonna it's gonna suck trying to put the bead in so i always try to make it you know tight together so we can get a perfect bead in there the first time and the only time uh repairs happen out there it does happen i'm not going to say it doesn't happen sometimes for some reason you catch a repair it's okay don't worry about it we'll get into all that later but right now this is the introduction of my bevel machine. This is my, my biggest bevel machine, like I was saying. Now I have one more H&M. This is my second H&M. And actually this H&M this is to just cut my 10 inch pipe and my 12 inch pipe. So you'll see right now it has these buttons on it. These little buttons, they're like eighth of an inch and they actually hold it to cut a 12 inch pipe. Now if I wanted to accomplish to cut a 10 inch pipe, I need to put them one inch dogs on there. And that'll make this machine cut a 10 inch pipe. Now this is just some of the machines that I have that I use out here. Again, these are real handy. This is an H&M and this is an H&M. I have two other beveling machines that I'd like to introduce and talk about and tell you guys. Here's my other beveling machines that I have over here to the side. And what they are is they're a uh, Matthew Deerman and I have an eight to six and a four to two. So I'll start with my smallest one. My smallest one is a four to two. Right now I had a long bridge on it because I was trying to get a back cut on something. Um, there's many reasons why we use these beveling machines and how we use them. You notice on this bridge right here particularly, I have cut the top of it off. I like to do that on a lot of my beveling machines is cut it off. Boom, just get rid of that thing. That way I can have easy access to this right here. If you notice, it kind of sits in there, it's kind of seated. So to loosen it up and pull it straight up is not really, you know, easy to do. So instead it's able, it's easier to loosen it up and slide it off and turn the whole thing around and then put it back on. That also saves time in having to not drop your barrel or adjust the straightness of it because it's already adjusted straight and to the height. So that makes it really good access to just be able to flip it and cut the other way. That's good for cutting pups um, if you can't get the beveler on there a different way, okay? So I just wanted to kind of bring this to your attention and, and kind of show you guys these things because a lot of people aren't aware of these little tricks. Over here, I have my three inch dogs. These are my three inch dogs. These rest in here. They have a little screw and they go in there. The same with my two inch dog. Two inch dogs go in there too. And same thing, I gotta use that same screw because I don't have any extra screws. I just use the same old screws. It's all screwed up, but I like it. So this is my Matthew Deerman, my two to four, I call it. This is actually my long bridge. Now I have another bridge that I cut in half. I made it a short bridge, and that was for getting in tight spots, tight areas. And the reason that's why I like to rock the bent tip is because that allows you to, to not have your torch out. So that way you're not banging into stuff. It just allows you to get access into quicker places that are kind of harder to get to and get a cut. And so those are the reasons why I have the front of it cut off. And that's another reason why I cut it in half. So I got two of them. I got one that's long. I got one that's cut in half. And then I got this one for this bedlam machine that I have not yet cut it off in the front yet. But you know, that's, 
Uh, I kind of don't want to because this is kind of like a a vintage a vintage one to me. This this was actually I got this one from a, a dear person to me. Here's my eight to six, uh, Matthew Gearman. You notice right now I have the one inch dogs, and I said that you could apply that to my 12 inch machine to make a cut a 10 inch pipe. And that's what you would have to do. You'd have to put these one inch dogs on that 12 inch Beverly machine, my H&M, my other one, that I introduced secondly uh, to make a cut 10 inch pipe. To make this one cut six inch pipe, we apply the one inch dogs. To make it cut eight inch pipe, we apply the buttons that are on the 12 inch, which are the little eighth inch buttons, you know. That's what we call them, we call them buttons, but they're really like spacers or dogs. In other words, we call them. All my machines have a chain that wraps around it and a brace to hold it tight. All of them, all of them I have are like that. That's kind of, uh, you know, these are kind of just like my favorite kind of Bevo machines. I really like these machines, they're real good. Other people like to have other ones made by uh, Sawyer, Sawyer, I believe it is, and there's another company out there. Uh, Man, I can't think of the name. There's a lot out there, though. And there's even knockoff people that make stuff. Um, there's also another one that I like, too, that I, you'll see out there, and it's called the Pickle. They have the Electric Pickle, which is actually hooked up to power. And uh, then they have another one that's just uh, manually where you can turn it with your hands. And I've actually demonstrated that one before. Well, that's mostly what I got to say today. These are my Bevlin machines. I just kind of want to introduce them to you guys. And let you know what I'm going to be working with and showing you what I'm going to be cutting with. All right. So when I start cutting all these pipes, I'm going to give you guys a good demonstration on how to cut these pipes. I'm going to show you on good height and straightness of the tip and what's needed mostly to get the best accurate cut you can possibly get. You got to know that when you're cutting thicker materials, you need to have a bigger size tip. An aught, they call it sometimes. Like a two aught or something like that. You need a bigger tip. They usually say to cut thicker pipe. So keep that in mind when you're going to cut pipe. Do I need a thin? Do I need a smaller tip like a one, or do I need a bigger tip like a two? And do also we gonna? I'm gonna teach you guys also um, about this degree and why I use it versus the, the straight ones. I kind of went over that earlier, but I'm gonna really go into depth on why I like this the most and how I use this. You also notice here on my my part that holds my torch, I have it cut. I have it cut because with a small barrel torch like this, these right here, they run into this. So I got just enough clearance to where I can turn this around and still have access to these. Now, a lot of the times people just like to turn their, their barrels around a certain way to make them face a certain way. I like to just rock mine like this, and I'm going to be going over and elaborating more on why I like to rock it like that. Okay, guys? Um, mad shout out to all my people who support. Yeah, Pipeliner Clothing Company. Blast, my boy out there, man. Stay true to people who are true to you. I also want to introduce the, the SoCo pants. They're sweet, man. I love them, Gone, They're awesome. Uh, I couldn't ask for a better fit. Shout out to all my people supporting me. I hope you guys are enjoying the videos. If you would please leave what you have to say in the comments. And of course, if you like it, put a thumbs up. And I don't care if you don't like it, put a thumbs down. Because you know what? It's all good. In the end of the day, I'm still showing you what you need to know. Because it's real, guys. This is the real deal. This is what I'm doing out here. These are the tools I'm going to be using. I'm going to be going over all the tools I'm using out here, including the tools that I create to use out here for that you don't even see, really. Uh, there's a lot of people that uh, I like to support, like Off the Hook Chain and Fab. He is awesome. He builds a lot of great tools. I use a lot of his stuff. The rollout wheel, uh, the 90 squares, the rollers for my pipe. Awesome, awesome. So anyways, guys, we'll wrap to you later. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, please share it and leave your messages in the comments. And if you're trying to contact me, there is, I think, a direct message here on here. I haven't got really too many direct messages. Please don't overwhelm me with them. But you can try to reach out on here. Please go and follow the Instagram as well and support me on Facebook as well, guys. I mean, it's cool. We're just doing what we got to do, and I want to help you get where I am in life. Because if I could do it, you could do it. I'm out. Peace.